The serial to analog symbol lets you break down a string with known properties into its individual bytes, and then express those bytes as analog values. The serial to analog symbol uses the speed key, STOA, and can also be added to your program by expanding the serial folder under logic symbols, and then clicking and dragging the serial to analog over to the detail view. The serial to analog has one input, an expandable number of outputs, and an expandable number of parameters. Conventionally, the input string has some known properties before it enters the serial to analog. Its length, which characters you want to extract, and which characters you want to ignore, and then which characters must be present for a byte extraction to occur. The parameters determine whether the string will be converted into analog bytes, so the number of parameters should match the number of characters in the input string. If you wanted the character at position 2 to contain the lowercase letter a, you'd add the following in the second parameter, 016ah. The 01 part specifies that the ASCII equivalent of 6a must be present in the input string. Parameters with the 01 in the front are like gatekeepers. If any of the requirements aren't met, the serial to analog won't change its outputs. And what's also neat is that you can tell the symbol to ignore characters. And in order to do this, you use the parameter 0000H, and you just put that in whichever parameter corresponds to the character's position in the input string that you want to ignore. And then the most exciting part to extract characters, you use the parameter 0200H, and again you just put that in whichever parameter slot corresponds to the character place in the input string that you want to extract. So what if you had an 8-byte string, but you only wanted to extract two characters? Well then on the output side, you would only have two analog outputs. Let's build a quick example program. I'm going to add an SIO, two extra serial to analogs, and then three analog initializes. The SIO will have three digital inputs driven by the X panel. Its parameters will be emergency123, x2, hex0d, power, 0001, hex3, and overworked logic. The SIO's output will go back to the X panel, as well as each serial to analog symbol. The first serial to analog is going to have 12 parameters and 12 analog outputs. All of the parameters will contain 0200H, and its 12 outputs will be fed back to the X panel. Serial to analog number 2 will also have 12 parameters. The first will be 0102H, then 010DH. The next five will be ignored, so they'll be 0000H. And then the four after that will all be passed to the output, so the parameters will be 0200H. And then the last parameter will have the value 0103H. Since we're only extracting four bytes from the input string, we'll only need four analog outputs, and these will also be shown on the X panel. Now the last serial to analog will have 15 parameters. The second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth parameters will all be ignored, and the first parameter will look for a lowercase o, the third for lowercase e, fifth for lowercase w, seventh for lowercase r, and ninth for another lowercase e. The last five characters of the input string are really what we're looking for, so the last five parameters will be 0200H, which means that we're also going to need five analog outputs. Finally, we're going to use the outputs of the analog initializes to reset the analog values coming out of the STOA symbols. And that's it, let's compile and upload to the processor. When the first string is triggered, all of the outputs of the first serial to analog symbol change to the 12 characters in the string. And this really isn't surprising because we chose to let all bytes from the input of serial to analog number one flow through to the analog outputs. But what's neat is that none of the other serial to analog symbols let any data pass to their outputs. Triggering the second string again makes all of the first serial analog symbols change, 
And the second serial to analog correctly pulls out the four characters we specified, which were 0, 0, 0, 1. These are just the ASCII equivalents. And the only reason why this serial to analog symbol displays those numbers is because of the input string. It has all of the correct characters that we specified. Finally, when I trigger the third string, the first serial to analog again changes all of its output values. But if you notice, it only parses the last 12 characters of the input string, which are R worked logic. But the third serial to analog takes the last five characters of the input string and passes them to its output, which only happens because the input string satisfies the re our requirements for the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth characters. The behavior of the first serial to analog with the third string is a little peculiar, and it's something you could probably exploit. If the length of the input string is 15, like this one, and you have 12 parameters on the serial to analog, the serial to analog will only worry about the last 12 characters of that input string. So really we could have put a bunch of nonsense in front of all of the strings that we sent and we would have had the exact same result. We've already seen that the analog to serial is good at extracting bytes, but equally important is its ability to filter out strings that don't match a given format. If you're communicating with a third party device, the serial to analog will let you pick out strings with certain features, and this ensures that the data that you're extracting is actually the data that you want. And if you try to imagine life without the serial to analog to accomplish the same things, you'd have to do some serial substringing, comparisons with the serial I.O., buffering, and then finally you'd have to do some more substringing to extract the necessary characters, and then use an analog initialize to convert the characters into their ASCII equivalents, and the whole thing is just a giant nightmare. Thanks again for watching everybody, it means a lot to us that you get something out of these videos. Be sure to leave a comment on something that you'd like to see in another video. If you enjoyed this one, give us a like, and if you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe.